yeah. The unmistakable sound of Tuesday right there. Absolutely. Now, Angelo has new equipment, so this uh, might uh, sound uh, better than ever. Our ASMR game is going to go up, up, up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 58 for June 8th, 2021. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Some, house, uh, some housekeeping before we start. Thank you to our Patreon super supporter, Cowboy Jack Durango, for his contribution uh, to the Beer Baseball blog on the power hitter level. And same to uh, Patreon super supporter, Rachel Elnar, for her contribution on the power hitter level. We super appreciate your support. Also, supporter Scott Lost for his contribution on the cleanup hitter level. Check out his comics and merchandise at accidentalaliens.com. And happy birthday to Scott Lost, who is uh, represented here by uh, Hideki Arabu, uh, <laughs> uh, Ed Brown, uh, Mr. Excitement, uh, wanted to uh, put that in. Happy birthday to Scott Loss, whose birthday is today. And a belated happy birthday to our own VP of Content Development, who had a birthday yesterday, Angelo Trinidad. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. What did you do? What did you do for your birthday? So yesterday, I uh, spent an awesome day with uh, the family at Disney's California Adventure, uh, where we got to uh, go to the Avengers Campus, which was absolutely breathtaking. Uh, but we had a great day at the park. The boys had such a great time. Uh, and we capped things off with a nice dinner at the Lamplight Lounge right on Pixar Pier. Uh, so it was, a, it was a wonderful day. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome to hear. And uh, I mean, one day... Uh, I, it was a long time ago. Um, but you know, when I turned 21, I thought it was great. Actually, that, I, I can't say that I'll say 22 because you, you've always been legal to drink on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So happy 22nd any... birthday. <clears throat> yeah. We don't want to run into any trouble there. <laughs> well, I, 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 then again, we're not, we're not really carding anybody, but, um, but yeah, so uh, definitely. So a lot, a lot of happy birthdays out there from Bubble Pug, If Sports Card. Um, yes. Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could <laughs> pronounce that pr properly. Yeah, so many people out there saying happy birthday. So, um, yeah. Thank so, you, everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah, and un unfortunately, let me. Uh, Yes, Phil, Phil <clears throat> Banward out there. Thank you, Ryan. Yes, uh, all, uh, Ryan <laughs> got married uh, last last weekend, correct? Yes, congratulations. Uh, Ryan got married on Saturday. He's actually on his honeymoon watching the show right now. So thank you for oh, tuning that's in. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, for uh, that's Big Teach 45. So thank you for tuning in uh, while you're on your honeymoon. And uh, yeah, we had a great weekend uh, celebrating his uh, his nuptials. And, uh, it was, a, it was a great weekend all around between that and, and the birthday. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. And, uh, and, uh, oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like you're in the boiler room. So <laughs> better lighting. Yeah. You, you got your sound set up and I think that you're on a new computer. Am I wrong on that? Yes. So, uh, my birthday present from my amazing wife, uh, she surprised me with a Microsoft surface pro. So, um, those, and uh, you, but you guys probably couldn't tell on your end, uh, but for the previous 57 episodes, we were, I was broadcasting from <laughs> my, yeah. my iPhone 11. So now, uh, now I uh, got a lot better equipment, new microphone, some new lighting. So, um, should be a good time. Well, and, and, uh, we're, we're appreciative of all your, uh, all your efforts here and uh hey it's it, we're still a work in progress if you can imagine after all this time so um but one thing we always have uh you know fun here on tuesdays and we really oh and uh getting kudos from from the peanut gallery um, awesome sounds like a million bucks so very very good um yeah i mean we we love doing this every every tuesday for uh for everyone including ourselves uh unfortunately 
um, our, our field correspondent and senior research analyst, um, is still in the field right now. He's, uh, he's making his way, his pilgrimage back to, uh, to Orange County from work. So he's going to be a little late. Um, but, um, maybe, maybe that we should uh, start a Patreon for him. So, so we can actually, ha so he can have Tuesdays off. That would, that would, that would be nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> we got to awesome. uh, his work hasn't figured out yet that he has a, a really important baseball show where he has to drink beer. So um so unfortunately, but he'll be here soon enough. Uh we really um we love Kevin's insights about um uh the dead ball era of baseball uh cuz he saw it firsthand. He did. <laughs> So, uh, Angelo, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you actually have uh, some gifts, I believe, uh, for your uh, well, a gift. I think you're going to yeah. do uh, so, uh, something with your other beer. But um, let's see what you got and what are you drinking? Yeah. So tonight I'm going to be trying for the first time. I haven't even tried it yet. Just cracked it open at the top of the show uh, from Brewyard Beer Company, uh, the Kalinga uh, Unfiltered Calamansi Pilsner. So um, this one uh, is 5% ABV with no IBU listed. Uh, it's described as a deliciously light beer with the addition of freshly picked calamansi lime during secondary fermentation. The tart and citrus gives the clean, crisp lager body a very refreshing finish. So uh, this is going to be my first time trying it. And this is courtesy of Mark and Caitlin, uh, whom, I'm, whom I spent this past weekend with at, um, Big Teach, at the Big Teach 45 wedding. And uh, so here we go. That's pretty good. Yeah. The uh, the citrus isn't too overpowering. Um, and this beer is definitely what you would call what the kids are calling it now crushable. Okay. Wow. That's that's impressive. Yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. Yeah, I was I was actually following this uh, brewery already on Twitter, and uh, so I had actually known. It, is, is it um, if I'm not mistaken, it's in, is it in Glendale, right, or is it uh, somewhere in in the LA, greater LA area? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe. Um, well, if I had my senior research analyst here, he would be looking this up right now. Um, but I, I think I was already following this because I, I think I wanted to go to it. I, I think that they might have one in um, in Glendale. I'm probably uh, wrong on that one. And, uh, but, uh, I was expecting, I mean, with this many, uh, is it tangerines that are, that it's in there? Uh, it's at, well, it's calamansi is the fruit. Oh, okay. It, okay. So I was like expecting that. it to be robust with this. I mean, just, just from this picture alone, but so you, yeah, so it's, yeah. So that, that's, that is the calamansi in the background, uh, that the beer is sitting on. So it looks mm -hmm. like a orange or a tangerine, but it's actually gotcha. the, the lime spectrum more so than the orange spectrum. Um, so, uh, this is frequented in a lot of Filipino, uh, dishes. So, uh, oh. yeah. So brew yard beer company is, uh, uh, um, oh, there's I a lot of now. Filipino influence. Yeah. You see the, 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 the star and the, the, Filipino and the sign. And I don't know how I missed Filipino that flag in the background. And actually the, um, the one I'm trying, uh, that I'm going to have on the show next week is a Ube infused, uh, beer, which oh, Ube that? is also. Ube is a, a purple yam traditionally used in Filipino dishes, uh, more in a dessert form than anything else. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I was right. It's a small family owned brewery in Glendale, Arizona, passionate about brewing beers. Uh, we can be proud. I can I'm proud of. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Brewyard uh, beer company dot com. Check them out. And uh, it's a brew yard, a, a brew yard beer co on Twitter. So yeah, definitely check them out. I've, I think I had them on there because I, I was, whenever I was in Glendale, I wanted to check them out because there's always, there's so many of them hidden in Glendale um, that, uh, that, I, you know, you just, you would miss if you didn't kind of uh, seek them out. Uh, Kevin was actually going to, uh, he'll probably talk about this beer. This is the stone enjoy by, uh, July 4th, 2021. Uh, if you're not familiar, stone does this quite a bit. They have yeah. uh, beers that are supposed to be enjoyed, uh, by a certain date. Um, not that you can't enjoy them afterwards, but they're going to be the most fresh and, uh, they, they actually brew them for, you know, these special things, obviously the, the packaging kind of tells you it's, uh, independence day and stuff like that. So, um, 
Oh, okay. So yeah, Brew Yard Beer Company is on the boundaries of, of uh, Glendale Burbank. Burbank is another one that, that I haven't, um, there's a whole bunch there too that, that I uh, have wanted to go to. In fact, there's a, like a whole row of them, if I'm not mistaken. When I went to San Fernando Brewing, uh, they told me about the, it was kind of, it was kind of like this, uh, uh, what do they call it? it? It's like a little trail and you can act, you actually had a card and then you get the card punched at each one of them that you oh, went that's to. Cool. So, it, yeah. So it, it was, it was not so much like a tour, but it's like, you could actually, um, I forget what they call it. It was, it was like, you know, it was like a, like a brewery trail or something like that, but it was actually, uh, through Burbank and Glendale. Um, Yes. So thank you for that. So uh, I'm going to go into my beard. Um, and uh, ironically enough, uh, awesome. paperback uh, brewing. Uh, this is Bunny with a Chainsaw. This is a hazy double IPA from paperback brewing. Uh, also in that area of, uh, of Glendale. Uh, that I, I cannot wait to, to go to because they have so many um, like just just their packaging is amazing. Their beers are incredible. So that makes it really easy <laughs> to go over. And this one, uh, it says, um, his cuteness uh, will cut you to pieces. It's bunny with a chainsaw. It's, it's a double dry hopped uh, hazy India pale ale, 8.2 ABV. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to be um, a little cross-eyed uh, after this one, uh, but, but uh, it's super good. Super hoppy with uh, Idaho 7 and Mosaic hops. Uh, it actually doesn't have a lot of IBUs. I mean, it's in kind of the middle of the road, uh, 48. But yeah, you can smell the hops like a, a good distance away. That's awesome. It looks good too. I so love so good. Yeah. So good. The, the, yeah. the haze actually the haze actually looks better in the live shot than it does in the photo. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to get that because you can tell it like that's backlit, but you can you can yeah. see in my beard it's like super murky. Yeah, actually, uh, yesterday at California Adventure, I had two beers that I've never tried um, that I wanted to make mention because they were both excellent. Um, I had um, one of the you know one of our favorite breweries uh, here from Unsung Brewing. I had mm -hmm. the Carina Hazy Double IPA, uh, which was very very good. It was eight point seven ABV, so I was feeling pretty nice after that <laughs> after that one. Um, and then um, so that was really good, very hoppy. Um, but the IBU wasn't, um, too far out of kind of my, I guess my tolerance, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my favorite beer that I had yesterday was at Lamplight Lounge and it's from Bottle Logic, um, oh, which yeah. is, based, yeah, which is based out of, is that Placentia, your Belinda area. Mm -hmm. And I had their fuzzy logic, hazy peach IPA. It was amazing. So yes. good. I'm so glad you had bottle logic. Uh, I didn't. Oh, did I? Not, I I think I wore the shirt on. I might have wore it on something else actually. So Kevin and I uh, actually have been to Bottle Logic uh, a couple times. They would have these really great like beer festivals where you could only get you know these beers there. There, uh, they remind me of this paperback brewing where their their uh, artistic uh, or the art on their cans, the their merchandise they have, everything they do is like incredible top notch and yeah. really super uh really unique to them and they they would give out like this passport and you you got the passport at the beginning but then you had to go for like a certain amount of days it was like i think it was like over a week so if you went every day you could accumulate enough uh passport types of things when you tried the beers to get like prizes oh that's and, cool and 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 but their beers are not for the faint of heart. So yeah. uh, they they were definitely uh, ones that you'd be like by by day four you would be wiped out. Right. Uh, but but they're they're super uh, sought out. So Bottle Logic uh, for those of you out there, uh, if you like a lot of the the higher end um, ABV and and uh, uh, like bottle or I'm sorry. Um, like cast, they put they put them in the in the caskets and stuff like that, and age them and stuff like that. They have a lot of those great beers, awesome. so definitely check them out. So I was really surprised that you had that. That's really awesome. Yeah, and they had it on tap at at the on tap. That's yeah. even yeah. That's even crazier. Yeah. All right, so let's get into this day in baseball history for June eighth. 
June 8th, 1934, the Reds become the first team to travel in an airplane when Cincinnati GM Larry McPhail flies 19 of his players to Chicago for a series against the Cubs. Uh, you know, we, we take this for granted now. <laughs> there was a time when they, they didn't do this. It was all by yeah. train. Um, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure like uh, traveling by car uh, was, was just as difficult at the time. Uh, in 1946, New York would be the first team to fly regularly using a chartered uh, Douglas DC-4 that will become known as the Yankee Mainliner. Wow. So I, 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 don't, I don't have the exact picture. I'm only assuming that this is uh, uh, the, that DC-4. But uh, it's uh, very interesting that, to think that, that there didn't uh, – there, I guess there was a first time for everything, right, to fly right. players. June 8th, 1950, after beating the Browns 20 to 4 with 23 hits uh, at Fenway Park, the Red Sox set a major league record for runs scored by one team as they maul St. Louis again 29 to 4. Boston's two days total set consecutive games records for hits and runs scored. Uh, I, a lot of people don't um, know that, uh, that and, and actually I didn't know at the time was that uh that st louis the cardinals were not the team that if you were to buy a team back then uh st louis cardinals would not be the team you would buy you would have bought the browns because they were actually more uh, uh they were actually more pro prolific uh but they they weren't good <laughs> so and this this right here tells you they uh they give up a, they give up a lot of runs in this two days span. A lot of runs, yeah June 8th, 1951, White Sox reliever Marv Rotblatt becomes the first pitcher to be, to be driven from the bullpen when he enters the game in the eighth inning to face the Yankees in a 4-2 loss at Comiskey Park. At present, transportation to the ground is only for White Sox pitchers, but later in the season, the team will provide the visiting bullpen hurlers with a black Cadillac, which has been supplied by a local funeral home. Wow. This actually happened. Can you imagine? And there's actually a picture to prove it. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I do wish, and there was a push just recently, they were going to bring back the bullpen carts in an effort to get the, uh, the players there faster. faster. Um, I remember like uh, uh, Arizona did that, uh, I believe. I think they had one. They had a bullpen card. I can't remember uh, who the other one was, uh, but I, I'm, I'm all in support of the bullpen cards. Love them, love them, love them, love them. That's awesome. June 8th, 1952, before starting a twin bill against the Reds, Dodger manager Chuck Dressen tells Cal Abrams that if he <clears throat> wants to stay with the team, the bench warrior needs to taunt the opposing skipper. After spending the opener of a doubleheader heckling his opponents, the outfielder is informed between games of his trade to Cincinnati, effective tomorrow, and will have to report uh, to his new field boss, one furious Rogers Hornsby. Wow. I, I, this sounds uh, a bit uh, trumped up, but I, I, do, I, I do think that this is a, a pretty amazing story, if it's true. Um, and I would, I it wouldn't surprise me that they actually put someone up to do this. Um, but trading him to the other guy that he was taunting seems a little, uh, drastic. It's almost, yep. almost too perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> June 8th, 1955, after only eight games and 13 innings of work, the Dodgers option rookie left-handed pitcher, Tom Lasorda to Montreal to make room for a bonus baby who is also a southpaw. Sandy Koufax, who injured his ankle, comes off the 30-day disabled list. You know, I I, I think that I'd be, uh, if, if Sandy Koufax was coming in, I, I think I would <laughs> gleefully, I, even though it's in Montreal, in another country, uh, go back to the minors. I think that, yeah, I think he's, he's a pretty good guy. I'm with you. <laughs> June 8th, 1961, Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron, Joe Adcock, and Frank Thomas hit four consecutive homers in an inning off Reds pitchers Jim Maloney and Marshall Bridges, making the Braves the first major league team to accomplish the feat. 
the seventh inning big fly barrage, another blast by Matthews, and one by Warren Spawn. Wow, I wasn't aware that the pitcher Warren Spawn actually did one. Aren't enough when Cincinnati still manages to win at the Crosley Field contest, ten to eight. Wow, what a what a game that was. Wow, that's amazing. That's a that's a super huge game. Now, I actually I think I might have my uh, slides out of order here, but so I'll probably have to go back. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why I only have this one. Okay. Um, actually, let me go ahead here. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, June 8th, 1961, the A's signed Lou Krause, who hurled 19 no hitters and struck out 24 batters in one game on the academic level as an amateur free agent the day after he graduates from high school for $125,000. Wow, 1961, that's a lot of money. That is a lot eight, of money. Eight days from now, the 18-year-old fireballing phenom will throw a three-hit shutout against LA in his major league debut. Now, uh, the reason why I have this picture, actually, I'm not sure where my other slides went, um, but it actually, he is actually uh, kind of famous because he was the first pitcher or he was the opening day pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, so wow. the very first game the Milwaukee Brewers uh, pitched, uh, he was on it. This was from um, a couple of years ago, uh, and he he looked great. He actually died in February of this year, unfortunately, uh, but he looks great here and uh, super good shape. Uh, but yeah, he was the very first pitcher to uh, pitch for the uh, Mo uh, Milwaukee Brewers. So wow. yeah, Lou Krause. I think we got a drink to that one. Oh yeah, salud. And uh and he'll be missed. And and I didn't even know that before before this. I just happened to be on today's. So there's a lot of like draft stuff from today, and I, I think that's what kind of threw me off here. So June eighth, nineteen sixty five. In the first major league free agent draft of students and sandlot players, I love that they use sandlot players. Uh, the A select Arizona State star Rick Monday, making him the first player to ever be drafted. Kansas City will also select his Sun Devil teammate, Sal Bando, in the sixth round. Now, uh, Angela, I'm going to ask you, uh, Rick Monday, uh, uh, where, do you, where do you know him from? Um, that's a broadca broadcaster or radio. Yep. Radio analyst or radio show host, right? Yep, for the Dodgers. Yep. So before that, he was a player <clears throat> with who? That I don't know. Okay, so he, he played with the Dodgers. He actually had a very uh, big home run. I think it was at 81 against uh, the Montreal Expos that uh, put them, uh, you know, got them past the Expos. At that time, was a was a, a really big team. And and uh, and uh, they they could very well could have won the World Series that year. Uh, he had a big home run in Montreal. Uh, he also was famous for this. He actually played for the Cubs, and remember he was the one that um, he snatched that uh, the flag. Oh, he was playing for the Cubs at the time. He snatched the flag from the people who were burning it. That's right. Yep. And Sal Bando right. played on the Oakland A's uh, in their uh, World Series teams in the early 70s. So there you go. There you go. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm mentoring you. <laughs> uh, every, every week. <laughs> uh, June 8th, 1965, in the inaugural draft, as we spoke, it's the same day. Uh, the Mets' pick, uh, first pick is Southpaw Les Rohr. R O H R, who, due to an arm injury, compiles only a two and three career mark in pitching in parts of three seasons. But the Mets got this guy, uh, actually wow. selecting him in the eighth round. <laughs> and I love that he's the most handsome sophomore. Um, which, uh, yeah, I wish I wish that was my uh, nickname in high school, most handsome sophomore. <laughs> Uh, it was not. It was uh, probably <laughs> the most awkward sophomore, 
or uh, or or where where's Mike? I think that that was another uh, popular nick nickname of mine. Uh, yeah, I wish Kevin was here on this one. He would love this one. Uh, June eighth, nineteen seventy nine. Dan Marino and John Elway are selected fourth and seventeenth, respectively, by the Kansas City Royals during the free agent baseball draft. Uh, did you know that? Um, uh, either of these guys played baseball at all? I knew they they had baseball backgrounds in college. I didn't know you, either of them. Each of them were drafted though. Yeah, <clears throat> it's crazy. I wasn't aware of uh, Dan Marino, but uh, John Elway, I did because uh, you know I knew he played baseball at Stanford, so that was. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I guess uh, uh, the two future NFL Hall of Fame quarterbacks will never appear in a major league game, but Elway will play 42 games in mm -hmm. Onietta in the New York Penn League in 1982 after being redrafted by the Yankees. So he could have played oh, wow. for the New York Yankees uh, wow. at some point, which is, I, I, I remember seeing uh, some people making uh, uh, fake baseball cards of John Elway playing on the Yankees, yeah. which, uh, because I, I'm sure it was from this because they had the pinstripes. So, but I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I love when we uh, do the crossover sports like Danny Ainge and, Yep. No way. Now Marino. Uh, we talked about Bob Gibson playing for, uh, that was in one of the first shows where Bob Gibson was playing for the Harlem Globetrotters. Yep. So you guys see, you guys are learning all so much here. <laughs> June 8th, 1987 angels hurler Don Sutton loses to Phil Necro, uh, who throws seven and one third scoreless innings for the Indians in a two to nothing win uh, at uh, Anaheim. It is the third time this century, all uh, uh, occurring during the past two seasons, that two 300 game winners will have started against each other. Now, at this point, Don Sutton had 312 wins, Phil Necro had 314. I can't even imagine that. that uh, Angela, question to you Do you think this will happen in our lifetime? Uh, that th no, it, it can't. It almost can't. That's like it, it's like it's like if if uh, Justin Verlander got to three hundred. I think he may be the closest. I might be wrong on that. Um, um, I don't even know who was who was after him, but like they would have to be probably. still going at this age. Yeah, that is incredible. And finally. Now, th 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 if this is a one to end a drink on, uh, we're going to do it. June 8th, 1993, after serving as Milwaukee's mascot from 1973 to 1984, Bernie Brewer comes out of retirement after an eight-year absence. Wow. The mustachioed costume character once renowned for sliding into a mug of beer after Hometown Homers is brought back by popular demand when the fans vote for his reinstatement. Uh, and it says by an overwhelming 21,000 to uh, uh, 1,300. Uh, I don't know. I, I wonder where you could get your ballot. Hopefully it's at, at, at the games. Um, but yeah, so he was brought back and he's a staple. Yes, Bubble Pug, Bernie indeed. <laughs> yes. So um, for those who don't know, um and and for the historians out there uh 69 uh, year old retired aviation engineer milt mason was the original bernie brewer but i don't think he was known as bernie brewer actually uh mason was an acquaintance of the brewers general manager marvin milks and in june 1970 mere months after the team moved from seattle he vowed to live in a trailer atop County Stadium scoreboard until the fledgling Brewers drew a sellout crowd. Wow. Um, so they, so he, they actually put him up there. They gave him like a refrigerator, an exercise bike, uh, a, a bathtub. Uh, and he was, he, could, he was actually able to cook up there as well. And it only took, uh, I think, yes, uh, he, he was there for 40 days um until august 16th 1970 when they actually it was uh bat day and uh they actually lowered uh the uh sellout what, what the sellout number would be it was like forty thousand, and um so so what happened was is he finally came down but he uh 
the way he came down was on a rope and he slid down and burned his hands. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately he, um, he wasn't long for this world. He was actually, uh, he died about three years after this happened. So, uh, the original Bernie Brewer, uh, rest in peace. Rest in Marvin peace. Milks, uh, is, uh, uh ge- the general manager who made it happen, but this is Milt Ma- Mason. Salud. Yeah, I love. Um, yeah, I, I Bernie. It, it's definitely the best. It's the, when he, I, um, I've actually uh, got to see it. I got to see Bernie slide down the slide. So that was definitely a thrill. And we met someone. Uh, Kevin and I met someone when we went to the Inland Empire Sixty Sixers game. We met this guy, and he was actually a uh, he, he was a super character uh, for Inland Empire. He was just he was just a fan, but he was a guy who. Um, like they they would uh, whenever the players needed a place to live they would like put him up and stuff like that so he was um but he was wearing an enrico palazzo shirt we've we've made mention of this probably before so we're just like oh man awesome shirt so we got to talking with him and it turns out he was an extra in uh, mr 3000 with bernie oh, Mac. Wow. <laughs> yeah go figure um but he was telling us we we actually went to a brewery after uh, the game and we just kept on talking and he told us a story about he went to he went to milwaukee and um for a game and um uh, he probably had a few in him but he actually went and slid down bernie's uh slide oh Um, wow well let me let me just tell you now you're not allowed to do that um and uh, yes he was arrested So, but he did, he can, uh, the claim to fame saying that he can, uh, I think it, yeah, I'm sure it was, fun. you know, a bet or something like that, but, uh, that was, uh, uh, and I'm spacing his name, uh, uh, his name right now, but I'm sure Kevin is yelling it at the, uh, at the screen right now on his way back. All right. So let's get to it. Um, you know, Kevin is not here yet. So yeah. So this is a uh, six already. Um, Let's get to let's you know what maybe we can do some extended pack wars until he gets here, so we yeah, maybe we can just do opening day until he gets here. <laughs> that be good. Let's yeah. let's do it. So <clears throat> here is the baseball card pack war standings rule. You know we we need to catch up, so maybe maybe we can get a ho, ho, uh, some hands in. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, if sports card says anyone know if they got rid of the slide, maybe they just painted it. I I I think I think it's still there. Yeah. I think it is still there. Yes. Yes. Kevin is, uh, <laughs> he's mathematic. We're, we're mathematically eliminated. I, I need to do right. something clever, uh, either to put him into the stratosphere or, uh, uh, or to get us back into the game. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on that right now. So, uh, here are the baseball card pack wars rules. We open our packs, uh, you know, relic card. Uh, we're looking for autograph cards, highest card wins, uh, in the, well, in the first rounds, I'll say, but the last uh, round we play is the wild card where it goes two points. We all drink when we get a Brewers card, and uh, Cowboy Jack Durango is uh, drinking incessantly. I'm sure you have a good start on us, sir. Yes, Bubble Pug says the uh, slide is still there. Yeah, it's AmFam Field now, which is uh, boo. It's it's Miller Park. Sorry. Sorry, it's Miller Park. I will never stop calling it Miller Park, uh, especially uh, with the connection to uh, Bob Euchre. It's always going to be uh, yep. definitely Miller Park, always for me. All right. Uh, so, Angela, why don't you go first? We're going to do uh, 2021 opening day until uh, Kevin gets here. Cool. Let's All right, do it. So let's do it. Let me see if I can. There you go. All right. So we're going to kick things off with... Corey Seager. I dropped one, which is Mike Soroka. Joey Votto. We have Dane Denning. Kevin, uh, 10 minutes away. So, yeah, let's get in a whole bunch of. Co- Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Salvador Perez. Otani Shohei. And rounding it out, we have the TC Bear. Minnesota oh, Twins. Wow. Twin City Bear. There you go. All right. 
Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll definitely have to talk about uh, the Abner Doubleday and his involvement in baseball. I think what he's talking about is that, you know, it's been debated if he's actually um, – he has anything to do with the beginning baseball. It was uh, more of propaganda um, or, or kind of a made-up story that kind of got uh, um, made us around uh, for 100 years. Um, I, th- I think that uh, that's what he's referring to. Yep. All right, so let's, let's do it. 2021 opening day. Let's go with uh, Ryan Yarbrough uh, from the Rays. Max Funky Muncy. There we go. Uh, this is a future stars. Adbert Azale for the Cubs. Byron Buxton for the Twins. Anderson Tejada for the Rangers. Uh, Brett Gardner for the Yankees. And Legends of Baseball, Cal Ripken Jr. Nice. All right. So high card. My high card is Corey Seager, 174. Ooh. And getting funky. I got the 197 on the Max Muncy. Dodger beat the Dodger. Ah, there you go. Oh, and actually, I'm sorry. Though Ryan Yarbrough is a 203 too. So there. Oh, geez. So uh, all set up. Okay, so let's um, grabbing another opening day, 2021. Hey, uh, I want to know in the comments. Uh, do you guys rip cards? Uh, or do you guys uh, collect cards? I know that some of you do, some of you don't. If so, what are some uh, what are some what's some new stuff that we can pull? I, I've been looking. Uh, to buy some stuff uh, for our polls, um, what's something that I should get? I saw Top's Finest was out there. It's a, you know, a bit pricey, but it's a wonderful product. It looks really, really cool. Um, but yeah, what, 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 what's some cool stuff that's out there that's coming out that you guys are excited about? Uh, Patrick Corbin for the Nationals. Uh, Mike Brousseau for the Rays. Uh, Buster Posey. For the Giants, uh, Jacob Junis for the Royals, uh, Isaac Paredes for the Tigers, uh, Joey Gallo, who is sitting on my bench on my fantasy team, who uh, I was heard was going to the uh, Padres, but uh, maybe not, uh, for, here for the Rangers, uh, and one of my favorites, uh, yeah, Fred yeah. Bird. Not the most uh, creative nickname, but a nickname nonetheless for the Cardinals. That's an awesome nickname. Yeah. Uh, uh, if Sports Car says, nah, he's, he's not really in the cards. And, and you can tell by your YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 2020 opening day. 2021 opening day, rather. Yeah. Freddie Freeman. Ryan Castellani. We have um, Cody Hewer. Cool Wit Merrifield. Uh, Byron Buxton, which you got earlier. We have a blue foil uh, uh, opening day insert of Alex Bregman. Oop. And Legends of Baseball. Derek Jeter for Mr. Ed Brown. There you go. Yeah. That's Ed's favorite player right there. All right. So my high card, and uh, he's he's uh, hit or miss on my fantasy team, but he's really super good right now, 219. Yeah. So the weird thing was my high card the last round was 174. Yeah. My high card this round is 175. Oh, there you go. All right. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. So I got another one here. The yeah. captain indeed. And I and I took Ed uh to Angels Yankees. That was the season I had uh, Angel season tickets. That was his uh during his last season. Oh and they cool. Did whole, yeah, they did a whole commemorative uh they did a giveaway, a Derek Jeter giveaway, which they gave away like a little it was like a little um uh 
not four by six. It was bigger than a, a it was definitely bigger than a, a baseball card size with all his uh, career stats and highlights. Um, and then the angels gifted him a custom surfboard. I was going to say, was that the surfboard? Yeah, that's awesome. That, you're, so you guys are at that game. Very yep. cool. Yep, we were actually a picture just popped up on it in my memories not too long ago. Yeah. Actually. And he says, uh, last time I saw Jeter hit a home run. That's awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, if sports card says, uh, yeah, Panini is actually very underrated. I like a lot of Panini stuff. I, you know, it's like they, they don't have the, they're not major league baseball licensed, so they don't have like the, uh, the logos on them and stuff, but I've seen some really cool stuff that's come out of that product. It's just getting better all the time. Uh, I wish that they would be more liberal about how they do that. I mean, that would be fun. They, they have a lot of great products, but yeah, tops Chrome is uh, great as well. You're right. My favorite. Yeah. Um, I, I tend, uh, I tend it, when I'm spending money, I, I usually go towards the higher stuff. Cause I, I just, I, for some reason I said, if I, I'd rather spend, um, you know, it, it, it sounds kind of arrogant, but it's like, I, I don't want to, I don't want it to sound like that. So if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a card, um, a, a lot of these uh, products now have a lot of paper in them. Uh, yeah. they're, they're, <laughs> they're very unvaluable kind of worthless cards. So you kind of have to sift through them. Um, but so I figured if, if you can get on the, on the, the bottom floor of something before it becomes, you know, one card for a thousand dollars, um, it's good. I have a couple of things that, I, that I'm glad that I jumped on a couple of years ago, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, the stuff that I saw come out of top's finest, I'm <clears throat> like, it's, it's a lot of money for not, not very high end, uh, hits. So, uh, yeah. that's kind of the way that the hobby is right now. Yeah, and uh, I think that you saying the same thing. Well, yeah, I mean to, to to that point, I mean I I actually liked the Donruss twenty twenty one design mm -hmm. better than I did tops the tops flagship uh, for this season. The foil stamp is cool on the top the seventieth anniversary, but overall the the inserts in particular um, and even just the base cards, I think the design was a lot. Uh, better with uh, with Donruss this year. Yeah, I love the Tops flagship design last year, though for sure. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it, there's always going to be really good stuff. I actually, I mean, uh, so if I'm going to spend something on a lower end product, I mean, I love this one, the the Pro Debut. Pro debut I mean, yeah. I love this type of stuff because I'm like, not only do I get to see stuff that I wouldn't see normally, um, um, I get to uh, you know see like they have really cool relics and stuff like that from around the ballparks and stuff like that. So uh, actually, uh, for this round, we're actually going to have this guy. Look at oh, this guy. Hi. Hello, hello. 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 <laughs> hello. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Take your time. Ease into the show. Take my time. I, I just walked in the door. I'm like, eh. It's all we're good. Live it's now. all good. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I'm grumpy and I'm sober. Get a brewer, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to... Um, so we're doing 2021 uh, tops opening day. Yes, so sir. So let me let me go with. Uh, so is this the second game or the third game? This is the third game. So who won, won the, the second one? I saw you won the first one. You won the second one. Yep, won the second yeah. one too. So this is the third one, and we'll start with right. this. Where we got um, Anthony Rizzo for the Cubs. This is uh, through a no hitter this year. John Means, uh, Evan White. From the Mariners. This is uh, one of Ed, one of Ed's favorites, Mr. Excitement, Giancarlo Stanton. Mike. He he actually I, I just put I just Mike put his man. um card down and he went on the DL. <laughs> uh, Alex Bregman. Uh, this is Humberto Mejia from the Diamondbacks and Legends of Baseball. Hank Aaron. Uh, let's go with Angelo. All right. Give Kevin a little bit more time to. For what? I'm here. I'm ready. Chillax. I haven't even opened this yet. <laughs> what am I having tonight? What I say I'm having? The stone. <laughs> yes, I know. All right. Okay. Paul Goldschmidt. Oh. Steven Strasberg. 
Jose Altuve, Nick Neidert. We have uh, JT Realmuto and LA Dodgers 2021 opening day. There you go. All right, Kevin Lyon. Well, first off, I guess um, I'll just show off the beer I have because you yes. mentioned uh, what Stone does year uh, several times during the year. They'll make a special brewery to be enjoyed by certain dates. This is the Enjoy by 7421. Yeah. It, here we go. A fruitfully independent double IPA. It has um, tangerine and pineapple IPA, 9%. So let's get some brewers. And hey, it's because cool. it's a, a regular 12 ounce can. There you go. Yeah. Fits nicely in that national sound. I get to break this one in. Oh, I should. I'm wearing the wrong hat. I should, wear, I should put on my sounds hat after I open up this pack here. I just thought like I'm gonna spill this beer. Uh oh. And uh, you know, is that is that uh, is that IPA unfiltered? I uh, usually that usually, usually is. Um, yeah. That's pop. I I wonder if that's why there's like the certain day not to enjoy it by. Oh, that's I probably, didn't see it on yeah. the can, and I'm not gonna take it out now because I worked way too hard to put it in here without spilling it all over me. That just be my my my, uh, my luck. <coughs> Anyway, I'll, I could, but both all those ones I, I've seen and made a point of mentioning it. I was surprised I didn't see it right away there. All right, well, let's see what we got here. Future star, Albert Alize. Rookie card of Cody Whitley. Victor Robles. Trevor Bauer. Yoan uh, Mongada. Otani Shohei. Nice. Pitcher card. And uh, my 2020 opening day is the San Diego Padres. All right. Yes. All right. So my high card is my Anthony Rizzo. Hey, Rizzo. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm going to hit you with my wrench. Uh, Anthony Rizzo is 220. Ooh, jeez. Is that the kill card? It might be. Uh, I'm... <laughs> 156, I'll two 156. Gosh, why'd I show up for this? Uh, Yohan Mankada is 202. Oh, wow. Okay, so well, 3 0, all right. 3 0. Ah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, it work. It's about as much yeah, of a rib work, as that. Brother. Hey, is, that, <laughs> is this a rib like what the guy did uh, to have him yell at Roger Hornsby? That's what I was doing right, the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> It always sounds like a wrestling rib. Oh, if like, sports cars yeah, like make fun of him. I love uh, if Bowman. sports cars talked about the oh, uh, yeah, Bowman. Bowman. I, I Bowman is like one of my favorite products of all time. Maybe maybe yeah. Bowman twenty twenty one is going to be the way to go, Michael. Now that I yep. think about it. Yep, I have a whole bunch of uh, Bowman Chrome, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other Bowman one that I might have. Um, actually, you know, you know, with another one that's kind of underrated. Uh, Leaf has a lot of good products. If you look up uh, Leaf um, is, is, as a product, Leaf trading cards are super good. I actually have like uh, Yoannis Cespedes has a brother named Yoelki, which um, I don't know. He, he's probably like uh, he's a teenager right now, but I already have an autograph of his. I think I have a Wander yeah. Franco um, out of that uh, Leaf as well. So you can actually get a whole bunch of like uh, like college prospects and stuff like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the other um like the prism stuff that we were talking about for the uh, yeah that's that's a great i i love I, but bowman as far as the higher end uh like uh, tops product i love bowman um yeah tops tops chrome uh definitely um okay so then uh, kevin do you have uh this one pro debut i think in my grab bag so yeah go ahead i'll find it i got a couple somewhere cowboy jack durango's got a bounce but uh thanks for uh all right thanks for tuning in yes. and hanging Call a shot for trivia. Tonight. Thank you, Jack, awesome. for joining us. Yep. Okay. So let's. Oh, uh, oh upper deck baseball is, uh, is another one that's uh, supposed to return. Is it really? Yeah. Really? Okay. I, I've heard. I've heard that. We'll, we'll see. We'll oh. see if it does. You you yeah. do have pro debut, Kevin, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's do it. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, he's actually doing really great for the uh, Chicago White Sox right now. Nick Madrigal. Oh, there you go. On the Charlotte Knights. Uh, this one's from the uh, Aberdeen Ironbirds. This is Kyle Stowers. 
Evan White uh, from the Arkansas Ooh. Travelers. I love that. That's an Mariners. old baseball oh, yeah. name. Uh, Usenel Diaz for the Bowie Bay Sox. Uh, this is uh, Ready for Flight. Uh, Jesus Sanchez from the New Orleans Baby Cakes, which no longer exists, unfortunately. Great wow. name. Only lasted for a short time. Uh, sh- this is a prospect out of Arizona State, Hunter Bishop. Uh, for the yep. uh, If Sports Cars should know him pretty well uh, for the Giants. This one's for the uh, AZL Giants. Andy Pages for the Ogden Raptors. It, uh, I think that he might be. Is he, no, I don't think he's on the Dodgers yet, but I think that he's pretty close or, get, or moving up. Well, Ogden, would have, Ogden is short season, so he yeah. might. I would think he might be a double A. Oh, maybe. My, my, yeah. I remember I think, seeing I, that I, name I, somewhere else. Okay. I don't see him being much higher than that from not playing and last year. Andrew Vaughn for the uh, AZL White Sox. All right. So, uh, Angelo, let's let's go with you. All right. I, forgot, I didn't have my Brewer affiliates ready, although now it's all different, you know? Yes, when true. these came out. Yeah, Upper Deck has exclusive rights to hockey. I remember that. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to kick it off with Xavier Edwards from the Lake Elsinore Storm. We have Nick Quintana from the West Michigan Whitecaps. Oh, here's an awesome one. From the Gwinnett Stripers, Christian Pache. Right oh, look at that. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, AZL Dodgers, Diego Cartaya. And I got uh, Drew Dre Jameson from the Hillsboro Hops. All right. Yeah. That, that hey, should, I think that, you know I what? Think that should be a drink. Yeah, it, Hillsboro drink. Hops, definitely a drinker. <laughs> if we're drinking for the Brewers, we're drinking for the Hops. You bet. And um, my last card is a um, relic card from the Copa de la Diversión, and it's Daniel Johnson jersey oh, relic. Look at that! With a nice, stripe nice from the Veleros de Columbus. This Ooh. is numbered numbered uh, seven sixty oh, out of ten eighty nine. Wow. So uh, wait, there's uh, a thousand. That's interesting. There's a thousand. Well, they made a thousand cards out of that Jersey or that, or that piece. Wow. About out of the, yeah, out of the Jersey. Yeah. I guess that's, that's pretty cool. Line. Yeah. Right on. That's so, a first look in a while. Very good. Who are you eliminating? Well, obviously I'm eliminating Kevin so we can catch up. <laughs> wow. Three and oh. All right. I'll remember that. No problem. <laughs> And my Michael's right. going to end up winning, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so I'm. Yeah, gonna, he's definitely. Uh, gonna I just, just I'll, I'll just leave. You guys can just open cards amongst yourselves. I'll just leave. <laughs> I don't need to be here. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Super short print. <laughs> Super short. All right. Uh, what's your What's your highest card, Angelo? Dre Jameson, one seventy three. Oh. High card, 180. Ugh. Uh, it's okay. At least we're catching up to Kevin. Yes. <laughs> hey, I didn't make the rules. Blame him. All right? Yeah, that, that, yeah, you that, was, this mess. that was Mondragon's boner right there. That's that, If I ever made one in, in life, uh, that was, it was <laughs> putting that. But I got overexcited for that anniversary show. All right, so let's do baseball trivia. We're not doing wild. Was that the wild card? That was the wild card. card? Oh, uh, that's right. We have to do the wild card. I'm not say anything. I'm just asking to lose, give you some more catch up. Okay. So uh, I I totally forgot. I forgot that you're here. See, you screwed up everything. (laughs) Bye. Bye. I'll leave. All right. So let's, uh, let me go back here. All right. I mean, you don't have to do the wild card. No, I, I definitely, I definitely would like to do wild card for sure. <laughs> All right, so I bought that that pro debut I was going to open. Okay, so let's go with. Hmm. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make it easy and just go with American League. So American League cards, yeah. <laughs> I will survive. What? What are we doing? Oh. No brewers. Come on, guys. 
So I had to put this away because I had an extra one. So my top yeah, heritage. Yeah, I, I kicked I kicked you out last time. Sorry. That's right. All right. So um, let's do it. So American League, we're going for. Uh, I'm lucky. I, I this I, I saved this one because it actually has a uh, Jorge Mateo and Edward Olivares. So there is a Kansas City Royal on there. So that's there that's one. <laughs> Fernando Tatis in Acción. Uh, that is not one. Uh, Miami, uh, uh, Starling Marte in action. That is not one. Oh, these are the 2020 uh, NL ERA leaders. Uh, See, Bauer, Darvish, Lamette. You betrayed your league. Your National League guy for That's your true. Cardinals, and look what happened. That's true. This is very interesting. Um this is actually a short print. Well, I mean, well, not a short print. It's at, it's out of nine ninety nine. Oh, that, but it is so a good. it's a Chrome. No, oh, that's uh, cool. Twenty twenty one rookie stars with Joey Bart, Dalton Varsho, and Ryan Jeffers. This nice. is a uh, five ninety six out of nine ninety nine. So I haven't seen one of these. This is very yeah. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Right on. Okay. And there is a twin on there. Am I correct? Uh, there is a twin. Yes. There you go. So, oh, that's that's, jeez. Oh, okay, so um, another American League uh, former Cardinal, uh, uh, Randy Arozarena. So that is uh, three. Eugenio Suarez for the Reds National League. J. P. Crawford, not J. P. Morgan, uh, for the Mariners. So that's four. <laughs> Thank you. And oh gosh, Ryan Jeffers saving me again. This is the Jeez. NL uh, 2021 rookie stars. Uh, this is uh, Joey Bart, Dalton Varsha. Oh, that's that card. Serious? It's the same that's card. The same card. How funny. So How same, interesting. In, in the same pack. That's cool. Uh, okay, so that's five. Uh, Angela, go for it. Actually, uh, let's let me let's, let's go. No, 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 let Angela go. Go ahead. Are you sure? Angela. Okay. What's the worst gonna happen? I lose again. It's all right. I'm already over like six today, so whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. You're like up by like fifty. Can you get a brewer at least? <laughs> See, dog so. sober. I'm mouthing off now. <laughs> so I have nineteen. It is nineteen ninety six tops series two. Oh my goodness! I didn't. What? Wow! When'd you get that? <laughs> I didn't know you had that. This was in. Um, uh, Mongo, when you got us the grab boxes from... Oh, okay. Wow, that's yeah. a while ago. We got that a long time ago. That's been in the bag for a while. It's, yeah, so it's now cool. we got to figure out, in 96, were the Astros were still NL and the Brewers still AL, I believe. Yep. So we're going to kick it off with uh, Brett Saberhagen on the Rockies. The Rockies? The Rockies. What? Ro wow. Wow. So NL. He's an AL guy, too. I know. Yep. So we got uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Hey! Day. There you go. Darryl, Finally. Darryl Hamilton with the Glamour. And I believe American League still at that point. I don't know when the Astros moved to the NL. Uh, it's like 2000. Early 2000s, right? Yeah. To like, yeah. Very good. All right. We got another AL. We have Roberto Hernandez from the Chicago White Sox. There you go. Uh, Baltimore Orioles, Jeez, Jimmy got Haynes. Got it. Uh, Chicago Cubs. These cards are not cooperating. Uh, is Brian, there, is there coming there? Bri no gum. Brian McNichol. Oh. Draft pick. Ooh, draft pick. Uh, we got another AL. We got Jose um, Herrera, rookie. You better, you better sleeve that one. Uh, we got um, Rafael Palmero. Oh my gosh, look at all these Orioles. Uh, we have Cincinnati Red, Mark Portugal. Herb Perry from the Cleveland Indians. How many are you at? That's like six or seven at this point. Yeah. Uh, we just, he was just, was this last week or the week before he was on the, we were talking about him, Dennis Eckersley. Yeah, that oh, yeah. was last week. We had his picture as an Indian, as a, as a, as a almost as a maybe young twenty four year old, maybe young. Yeah, yeah. 
Larry Walker, Colorado Rockies. And rounding it out with another AL, Mo Vaughn from the Boston Red Sox. So I, I feel like the only national did two, you get any National League cards besides those Rockies? <laughs> seven, yeah. Uh I got uh yeah, I got I a Cub got the Reds, and a red. I so I got eight. Oh my god, nice. eight out of twelve. By the way, uh so if sports card asked me to check the odds on the packs, uh this is a uh, one this, this card is one in every one hundred and sixty one. Oh so, nice. nice very rare. All right, Kevin. Well, you know, I'm not going to win no matter what. I'd have to bat a thousand. I have eight cards. Or you could have an autograph in there. Well, at least I'm getting to open this pack. If this is the, I don't know if this is the one that Angelo wouldn't let me open earlier. So let's see. All right. Well, uh, gosh, uh, the first card here is Nate Pearson from the Buffalo Bisons which is the Toronto, um, Blue Jays. Toronto Blue Jays. And I'll do it. Michael Bush, AZL Dodgers. So that ends that. So I'll just go through the rest real quick. Uh, Gus Farlin. Stockton Ports. Stockton yeah. Ports. That's brewer, I don't know. No, not a brewer anymore. That's, not that's, anymore. That's, they that's were the board shirt, long time ago. Tonight. The A's. Yeah, that's the A's. To uh, Bryson Scott from the GCL Phillies. Uh. Ulrich Bozarski from the Lakeland Flying Tigers. Yeah. I don't know what team, but it doesn't matter. Tim Tebow. What? Ooh, that's awesome. Tim Tebow from the uh, Syracuse Mets. That's cool. Uh, Tyler Baum from the Vermont Lake Monsters. Yes. And Grayson Rodriguez on the Delmarva Shorebirds. Nice. So, there you go, Angela. You got on the board. Yes. Yeah. Not at the Mendoza line after that one win, I don't think. <laughs> but who's I was Mendoza for today? That's for sure. <laughs> it's all good, Kevin. We're we're glad to have you here. So uh, you, you're going to make it up right here in our uh, baseball trivia. Oh, I'm sure I will. Okay, I, so I, I, I um, need more drinks. Yeah, and it, it's funny. Like I, I was thinking, because uh, I didn't didn't. Uh, Tim Tebow, like he was going to do a, like an NFL tryout or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he was signed by the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> so he's uh, at training camp right now. You know, I root for him because he's he's still trying. I mean, it's like you and, know, and uh, hey, Syracuse, that's Triple A. I mean, he he almost made it. He almost yeah. made it. He almost. You know, made I mean, it. come on, how many athletes even make it that far? I mean, heck, you we talked you talked about earlier on the show, Dan Marino. And John Elway couldn't even make it to the major leagues of baseball. Look how good of those athletes they were. And yep, thank true. you for sharing that. I did not know about Dan Marino either. Yeah, I had no I did knowledge. I not know about that. Dan Marino. Yep. Elway I knew about because I wanted that minor league set with him so bad when I was a kid, but it was too pricey for like a 12 year old kid to buy. Of course. <laughs> I, I like that we knew about it, but we couldn't afford it. <laughs> oh, I, there's no way I was going to be able to buy a 1981 or 82 owning on the Yankees uh, set with John Elway. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, just an exhibition, not a competition. So please, for the love of God, no Googling. <clears throat> I was going to say no betting because I'm betting on this. <laughs> what pitcher holds the Major League uh, record for most career losses all time? Your guesses are Cy Young, Pud Galvin, Phil Necro, or Walter Johnson. I'm very interested to hear what Angelo has to say. I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but. I mean, it's definitely someone that also has a lot of wins because they just had a lot of, they just had a lot of, they Lots played in a lot of games. Yes. Yeah, a lot of starts. Um, <laughs> Chad M coming in with a Jack, uh, Cowboy Jack Durango answer with rugged Ronnie Garvin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the most devastating finisher, the most devastating finisher in the in, in professional wrestling, the rugged stomp. That's right. Garvin stomp, stomp, stomp on that mound. Stomp in that mound. Um, for me, it's either between Phil Necro or Walter Johnson. Okay. Um, I'm going. Because of what we discussed earlier in this day in baseball history, I feel like there's going to be correlation 
to Phil Necro, and I feel like Michael would do something like that. Mm. Um, so I'm going to go with three, Phil Necro. Okay. Kevin. I think you're overthinking a little bit there, Angelo. Um, I, what the, the first thing I was just thinking of, I'm like, if Cy Young won over 500 games, he had to lose at least 250 to 300 games. So I'm pretty sure it's Cy Young. Let's see who uh, is out there. Yeah, what do we got uh, out there? <laughs> Come on, Rugged Ronnie Garvin. So we got uh, Bubble Pug saying Johnson. Walter Johnson. Uh, also, Walter Johnson from If Sports right. Cards. Complete he had a lot guess. of wins. Any, anybody else out there want to make a guess? Have you is heard of Pud Nico? Galvin? Have you, ha- no. have you heard of Pud Galvin? Kevin? No? I, this, I've just seen the name. I know nothing about the man. That's all I'm going to say. I, unless you put me under oath, then I'll say more. Colin Duncan says Walter Johnson. A lot of Walter Johnson guesses here. Yeah. Phil Banwer going with Cy Young. And the answer is brrr, Cy Young. Cy Young has 315. Wow, losses. you're pretty close, Kev. I, I, yeah. I remember reading that somewhere when I was a kid, and I was just like, my gosh, because I figured that if he won like what, 520 games, something like that? What's the yeah. number? 511, maybe? 511, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm like, you know, I was, and I remember was like, oh my gosh, he lost 300 games. You know, I think if you won that many, you had to lose a lot of games too. That's like 800. Like people yeah. don't, <laughs> people aspire You're to not, get 100. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if non decision things were even a gate thing back then, but it's possible he might have pitched you in more games where he didn't get a win or a loss. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, you're right. And, and okay, I, I so wasn't really much of a thing back then. You pretty much pitched the game ended, you know? So I, I, this was a real effort to put over Pud Galvin, who yeah. actually has. So if Cy Young has 315, number two is Pud Galvin with 310. Oh, my Could God. Could have taken him off the hook. Wow. <laughs> Do you know how many wins Pud Galvin has? Uh, I, you should definitely look that up because I want to give I you will. the, uh, I want to give you number three. Number three is very surprising. So obviously Nolan Ryan has 300 uh, career victories. Yep. He has 292 losses. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Walter Johnson, 279, Phil Necro, 274. Gaylord Perry, 265. Don Sutton, who we talked about before Mm -hmm. with 300 wins, had 256 losses. Um, And then, so all of those people that I just talked about from one to seven were all Hall of Famers. Number eight is a guy named Jack Powell. Uh, 255 losses is the first person who's not a Hall of Famer on this list. And to give you some uh, Pud Galvin uh, information, he actually is the first player ever to win 300 games. Oh, he actually went 365 and 310. So he might be like top, he might be around like somewhere around eight to 10 of all time wins. If you know, yeah. And, and from, from what it says here, and he I, played 17 years and he think about that seven, he played, he debuted in 75. You're tired in 92, 1892, 600 and 365 and 310, wow. 675 starts. Wow. In, in 17 years. I'm like, oh my wow. God. <laughs> they, they didn't I have mean, middle relievers pitchers? back then. I mean, or closers. <laughs> yeah. I know. I had to look too. He, he actually died at, at like 45 years old. I'm like, oh, well, he was already done playing by then for a decade. He retired at like 35. He's only 35 wow. after pitching that long. Oh my gosh. Phil Nico is just barely getting started. He probably got 100 wins after that. It's true. It's true. All right. So, question number two. Remember, no Googling. I, want, I know I want I'm closing it. Right? Baseball opinion doing... on what uh, the answer is. Who is the San Diego Padres all-time home run leader? I think I know it. I shouldn't look. <laughs> I just kidding. Oh. Mm. Adrian Gonzalez, Phil Nevin, Dave Winfield, or Nate Colbert? Well, the name I thought of is on the list. So when we get okay. there, I'll, I'm probably going to stick with that. At least I knew I had it at one point. Bill Nevin mentioned last week on the show. Very good to see him up there. Yes. Yes. 
I think Bubble Pug is going for Phil, unless uh, shouting out my my friend Phil Banwart. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cover Lang. <laughs> Cover Lang, yes, great name in sports. If sports cards going with Dame Dave Winfield. Man. We can't just say it's Satis Jr. because we know it's going to be him. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No way. He might, he might have it by the end of the year. <laughs> Boy, that makes these guys sound like real power hitters. I, I actually wait till you hear the, the, the list on this one. I mean, it, the, the Padres home run, uh, crowd uh yeah, I know. Is, wait, oh don't, 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 don't give any hints away here. Yeah. The one I, the one I immediately popped in my head before the multiple choice camp is not in the multiple choice. Which oh, was it's a Ken Cavanity, yeah. Oh, that's a good. Right. <laughs> that's a, that's I just a don't remember playing guess. long enough with the Padres to get there, right? He's, I, I think he's definitely up there. Oh yeah, I, um, I just didn't think he was first. I just remember, I always remember, I remember being more at the Astros still than the. Uh, that's the that same here, right? I'm gonna go with. Phil Nevin. Phil Nevin. Great guess. Okay. So, uh, what's, uh, Kevin, what, what are you going with? Uh, when you were reading the question, the name that was in my head was Nate Colbert. Because I Nate remember Colbert. at least at one point that he had it. And he's one of those guys where it's like, who? Yes. But he had a, he had some good years with the, with the Padres in the 70s. I think one year he hit like 40 home runs or something like that, I believe. And Kevin. Had a few good years. And, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There it wow, is. Good job, so Nate. I was just Nate waiting to Colbert. see if someone passed him, and I'm like, I don't know if it's those. I knew it wasn't Winfield, but I was like, I don't know if Nevin or Gonzo passed that. Wow, look at that jersey. So amazing. I love that. See, they talk about the, all the brown jerseys. Oh, Bring back these. Jersey. These are amazing. Those are great. <laughs> you know what I love? It looks like there's no logo on the front of the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks, looks like blank. a teeny card. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, those no sideburns, those, those big pork chop sideburns pork are chops, amazing. Yeah. Come on, bring so, that back too while you're. Do out. you have the the number of home runs I got here? I do. So list. Nate Colbert has 163 home runs. <laughs> right behind him, Adrian Gonzalez with 161. It's okay. Phil Nevin 156. Winfield 154. Yeah. Tony Gwynn has 135. And he spent 20 years of the team, pretty much. Right. Oh my gosh. Ryan Klesko 133. Kemenetti had 121, so he, uh, you know, huge in there, and and the first, uh, uh, I think he is he still with the Padres? Will Myers? Uh, I think so. Maybe. I think he is. He signed a pretty. He signed a long term deal with them. Like I thought so ago. too. Um, I think he's still with them. Yeah, I think I'd he's still with I'd them. I have to cheat. Am yeah, I allowed to Google now? Yeah, please. Yeah. But uh, so, and and then a guy who I know he he plays with. Um, I want to say the Red Sox now is Hunter Renfro. Actually, has eighty nine. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that then, tells uh, you that they were never able to get like a guy long term. I mean, well, that that and in addition to, I remember San Diego being a really spacious ballpark. They had to move the the fences in for them. To oh it, yeah, Jack Murphy. Yeah. 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 Totally, uh, Jack Murphy and yeah. and Petco. Petco, Petco is like, a pitcher is known being a pitcher's park as well. A yeah, pitcher's park as well, right? So um, Nate Colbert. So there you go. So you can impress your friends, Angelo, with some some deep baseball knowledge. <laughs> I, like, I'm glad you have other choices because I'm like last I knew it was Colbert. I was like it's possible Gonzo or Nevin could pass him, but yeah. wow, that's crazy. A hundred and what was it? One sixty? One sixty three? Oh my gosh! I mean that's yeah. nothing, right? Yeah, hey, uh, it's like what four or five. How, how long is it going to take, you know, like you said, Tatis, oh my gosh, he's going to be there in like three years. Yeah. And think about this. So like, just think of like Mike Trout. So he just had 300, right? So it's yeah, like last, he's, yeah, he's last year. almost yeah. doubled that, um, you know, in his time yeah. and what they did in a career. So pretty amazing. Heck, Otani might be there eventually. Otani hit another home run today. I think he's at 17 did this he really? year now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Did you see, okay. The, um, no, we, we don't talk much about modern baseball, but actually something happened today in baseball that needs to be talked about. Yes, um, Cabrian Hayes, uh, actually hit a home run today and didn't touch first base. 
So he was oh, called no out. Way. That hasn't wow. happened in a long time. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, he just he ran he just ran over the base because he thought it was a fair ball and he ran over the base. So can't do that in the uh, replay era, uh, for sure. All right, so uh, I we didn't get to mention him uh, much the last time, um, but I really wanted to mention oh, yeah. uh, the passing of uh, Mike Marshall. Excuse me. Yes, Doctor Mike Marshall. Thank you. I was You're waiting welcome. for the uh, I was waiting for the correction, Doctor <laughs> Mike Marshall, um, because uh, now in the modern age of baseball, now I love looking him up. Kevin, that's why I, I waited when I saw th what he's involved in. Yeah. Um, and he actually and what... passed away last Tuesday and I meant to mention on the show and for people who to, to, to clarify, there's a, this is, this is the pitcher, Mike Marshall, because it's actually a uh, Dodgers outfield, right? In the eighties exactly. name, Mike Marshall, we're talking about, this is the pitcher, Mike Marshall, just to verify. So he is the all time record holder in numerous categories. Um, uh and okay so so I, I don't even know where to start with him because like it's a it's it's in, it's insane when i when i did the uh, uh hashtag do the research when i did the research uh i i saw this in 1974 marshall became the first relief pitcher to win the cy young award so remember um uh what was it uh, greg uh greg Gagne, right greg gagney uh, eric eric gagney yeah Greg Gagne, um, Greg Gagne was the the shortstop on the Twins. We're talking about yes, Aaron, yes, yes, yes. Eric Gagne. So he he was the first. He was I mean he was a reliever who won the, the Cy Young Award. Right. But okay, so the numbers he put up that year were amazing. By today's standards, they are downright unbelievable. Right. That year, Marshall appeared in 106 games for the NL oh champion God. Dodgers. 106 games as a relief pitcher. Okay still a record for appearances in a season by a pitcher but that's just the mind-boggling number okay that's it's just the tip of the iceberg he finished 83 games saving 21 his record was 15 and 12. he had a 2.2 uh 2.42 era wait okay. wait wait yeah 15 and 12 and his era was only 242 yeah he lost 12 games as era is that low yes. oh my gosh it's insane he must have what been in a lot of tied games i mean insane, i don't know insane year wow so he and he also pitched 200 208 in the third innings in 1974. Mm. by comparison only six pitchers threw more innings um, in 19 in 2019. Yep. Okay. So all starters, of course. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, that's insane. In 2018, the number was five in 2017. The number was two. So, uh, Chris sale of the Red Sox led the majors with 214 in the third pitching innings pitched. Um, and this was, that was in 2017. Oh my God. Sale had shoulder inflammation surgery in 2018 uh, wow. as a result of all that. Wow. So one of the things that Mike Marshall fought against was he said that like the pitching, the way that he pitched was actually very unique. He, he didn't have like the conventional pitching uh, th throwing motion that most pitchers had. And if you if you look it up on YouTube, it's insane the, the see like because he steps down first and his arm comes through. And then the pitches uh, that he has, because he was known for a screwball, which is a screwball is a, a pitch that usually ruins pitcher's arms, right? Mm -hmm. it, he, he defies logic here. Wow. Um, he was uh, 14 years as a reliever. And um, yeah, and I, like I was talking about his screwball. So like he holds the American League record for most appearances in a season, 90, uh, with the 1979 Twins. My gosh, it's it's insane. It's insane. This guy was like uh, an anomaly when it comes to anything uh, <laughs> in today's game. Look, I just and, love, okay, we found the best picture of him too. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love I love this picture too. So casual. And yeah. I'm trying to remember the whole thing for, for you and I, Michael. He was actually he's actually on the he was on the ballot for the Shrine of the Eternals too. Was he really? Oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Okay. I got, I, while you guys are talking, maybe I'll find. I, I think I had the paper close by to give his info. Hang on one second. Okay. Yeah, so, Whatever, so I've been I, in that all day anyway. 
<laughs> Angela, who who is your favorite like reliever like um, to watch? Oh man, um, I don't know. I've, I've always kind of had not so Araldus Chapman for sure, based on oh, the velocity, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and in here in the pop of the glove. I've always had a fancy for um, submarine pitchers. Mm. So uh, Chad oh, yeah. Bradford, Chad Bradford's one that comes to mind um, that I enjoy watching. Um, but definitely, I think you in, in recent memory, it's it's really just it's been Araldus Chapman just for the sheer yeah. speed Power. and velocity of his pitches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, did Ciszek play for the Angels? Steve Ciszek. He's, he plays right. He plays for them right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I yeah, love watching young, him. Pitch. Said, I'm like, wait, what? What? Okay. When he does, I, good, I, when, when he when he when he does good, I like watching him play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, you you're not enamored by the, by the pitching motion when he's not doing good. Right. Uh, that yeah, I I totally he, get. He, he, yeah, he's another good one too. I mean, I remember uh, watching him when he was on uh, the Marlins. Yeah. C Shack. Um, and, um, who's, a, there's another one. Um, actually I, I really enjoyed watching K rod pitch too. And, and really personal is amazing. Right. And, and oh, Percival yeah. for that matter too. Percival so. was great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the other, um, you know what, you know who I like watching, although I, all relievers kind of just rattle you. It's like, you know, it, there's a, there's a shirt out there that says like, I drink because of my bullpen. Uh, but it's, it's, um, is, uh, Kimbrel. I think, yeah. I think Kim- yeah. Kimbrel is super fun to watch. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, uh, well, I mean, Chapman was awesome for the Cubs, of course, when he, uh, yeah, he definitely got them to that title in 2016. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, to, to throw that hard, that's like the, the new reliever is the hard pitcher, you know, throwing yeah. as, as crazy. Cause, um, the Cardinals had Jordan Hicks. But they all throw out their arms now, so that's like the unfortunate um, part of this. Yeah, and yeah. Um, well, I so one thing that's I realized, Michael, is the reliquary website's actually down; it's gone. Uh, so, I so I don't know what's going on with all that, but um, he actually became a doctor in 1978. He got his doctorate of philosophy in exercise physiology. Wow! So. He was teaching and advocating a pitching method he developed that he thought could completely eradicate pitching arm injuries. Right, right. And so that's why I think people were trying to get him attention for like the World Aquarius and like his methods. And I mean, you were talking earlier, he was using the screwball, which, you know, is supposed to ruin your arm. arm. And whatever he was doing worked out. And he, it, and I guess the way he was saying the people are throwing the ball is what's causing damage to the. Uh, ulnar collateral ligament, which is what, yep. when that gets torn, that's what leads to the Tommy John yep. surgery. And he never had that in his career. And despite but everything. And nowadays, it seems like, my gosh, what ten percent of the pitchers at least are having to do that? It it's, it's probably terrible. higher, and it seems to be like a career move now because yeah, when you come it, back I know, stronger. That's terrible because that's yeah. like a whole year of your career you lose. You that's know? right. That's right. Yeah, so uh, salute to uh, uh, Mike Marshall. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, we hardly knew you. Cheers to you. So that is the show we had for you this week. Uh, as always, we uh, always appreciate if you consider uh, going to our Patreon page, uh, supporting the Beer Baseball blog, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. We have um, our Etsy store, which you can buy this cool stuff. We can buy like uh, uh, our coasters, stickers, buttons all that on our Etsy page. Find us on our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us every week. Uh, We super appreciate all of your support out there. Uh, Angelo, Kevin, did you have anything that you wanted to promote before we uh, sign off? Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in for uh, another fun episode and educational episode of the beer baseball broadcast and uh don't forget to tune in each and every saturday uh for beer and break with angelo on our youtube channel um this past week uh we premiered an episode where i opened 2021 tops finest and uh, barring any distribution errors i'll be um giving a first look and review of 2021 top series two on this saturday's edition and uh monday night rip will be returning uh, next monday 
at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, as I'll be opening a blaster box of 2021 Panini Diamond Kings. And uh, I'll be making my return to the Diamond later that evening uh, in a men's softball league. Uh, wow. Oh, there you go. So, there you go. So I'll have a full report of that and how I'm feeling on next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't uh, mess up your ulnar collateral, collateral uh, ligaments. Yeah, exactly. You yes. Just be yes, careful. Definitely. Uh, Kevin. All right. First off, because I didn't get to this, that I wasn't here for the top of the show. I got to give a birthday toast to Mr. Angelo Trinidad. Thank you. A day late, but not a beer short. And uh, also, uh, I don't know if you guys gave one to uh, one of our Patreons, Scott Lost. Yes, we Happy did. Happy birthday today as well. So cheers we to did. both those gentlemen. Yes. Excuse me. Don't you cut me off because, you know, I got to make sure people need to know where to get a good laugh in their life. So all they have to do is send an email to jokelandaol.com or call 516-922-WINE, W-I-N-E. I have the number memorized now. That's trouble. <laughs> Otherwise, for me, look me up at uh, Twitter and Instagram at L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L. -L -L. And you know, I'm sure you'll see me at Radiant sometime this week, if not tomorrow. All right. So thank Cheers. you so much. Join us next Tuesday for more craft beer and curveballs here at the Beer Baseball Blockcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Good night, everyone. Take care.